This is Jeremy Tesmer with SGTV, and I'm excited to announce our newest exhibition, Sidney Gordon, Constructivism in Flux. Gordon's mature work extends from the late 1930s to the mid-1990s, through the heart of what we currently call the mid-century modern period and beyond. Our exhibition covers from 1943 to 1991. Our boy came up in Brooklyn, graduating from the Brooklyn Technical High School, from art classes financed by the WPA at the Brooklyn Museum, and eventually from Cooper Union. He graduated at the tail end of the Great Depression and right before World War II. As bad as things were economically and politically, artistically they were nothing short of wonderful. Europe's great surrealists were flooding into the city seeking refuge from the Nazi rise in Europe. The whole New York school was active, incubating abstract expressionism, the next movement that would sweep the art world. Peggy Guggenheim opened her gallery, The Art of This Century, in 1942, when Gordon made this painting and this collage. He made these drawings shortly afterwards. Are we looking at abstract surrealism? Is this automatic drawing? Is it Dada? Are these archetypal symbols? Check out the works of some of his contemporaries. Adolf Gottlieb, Mark Rothko, Ilya Bolotowski. In 1949, Sidney Gordon pivoted to sculpture. Two years later, he entered an American sculpture competition at the Met winning one of 94 coveted spots from a pool of 1,100 applications. Through the early 50s, he was invited to exhibit at the MoMA, the Guggenheim, the Whitney, and Grace Borgnick Gallery. In 1953, the Whitney acquired its first Gordon. He was hammering, a non-objective artist whose geometric works were precise, airy, and elegant. In the late 50s, he held simultaneous teaching positions at Sarah Lawrence and the New School for Social Research. At New School, a strange and brilliant musician named John Cage gave a series of lectures on indeterminacy, the idea that a musical performance might be entirely improvised, its beginning, middle, and end left indeterminate. Did Gordon listen in? Was he aware of Cage? Certainly, his work became more and more intuitive. Those lectures later gave rise to an art movement called Fluxus, a kind of neo-Dada movement that became very influential in the 1960s and 70s. Anti-rational, improvisational, and at times even funny in an art world, insider kind of way, Fluxus developed into a conceptually driven, subversive art movement with political overtones. Gordon, meanwhile, had decamped to the West Coast to teach at UC Berkeley with the likes of Joan Brown, Jay DeFeo, and Peter Volkus. Incidentally, William Theophilus Brown and Paul Warner, now in our middle room, were then studying there. In California, Gordon explored painted wood constructions. He made new sculpture. He went back to painting. His intellect and his process ranged over different materials and different ideas. From pure formalism to experiments with Dada's chants, Gordon never stopped playing with shapes and colors and his own creative process. I love this work. It balances cool rationality with chants and humor. Much of it feels very California, especially the work of the late 50s and early 60s. Sidney Gordon, Constructivism in Flux, will be on view through October 30th. Come see it.